Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to your readings for December 2019. We made it. We're at the end of the year, guys. We got through this doozy of a year that was 2019. It's been really a strong one will say, but hey, we made it. So congratulations. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric. It is very, very nice to meet you. And if you are returning, what's up guys? It is great to see you. So before we move forward, I just wanna say this really quick. I have this small intro here that I put in front of all of the monthly Zodiac readings. Um, and if you are new to, the, new to the channel, I highly recommend that you watch this intro once just so that you can get a general in some general understanding of how the readings work, how you can contact me if you would like a personal reading, blah, 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 all that good stuff. If you are watching multiple videos, I have put a timestamp in the comments section below that you can use to skip this intro, but I still recommend that you watch the intro at least once, yes? Moving forward from there, right after the intro, you're gonna find that we start into, we do actually get into the reading, but we start with the pre-shuffle energy. The pre-shuffle energy is the moment that I take right before I start recording the actual reading where I'm channeling the energy of the zodiac sign in question, and I start to shuffle the cards, and when things come out, I start to get the, the general energy of what we're gonna potentially be talking about during the reading. Now, it doesn't always have to be that that message continues, into the actual full-on spread for the reading, but it seems to be that way. It's quite often seems that the pre-shuffle cards come out, come back out in the actual reading, which is really cool. But just to clear up some confusion, that pre-shuffle energy is in fact part of the reading. But because this is a general reading, if that doesn't resonate with you, don't worry about it. Um, just get through that and then see what comes out in the rest of the reading, yeah? So I want to wish a very, very happy birthday to the Sagittarians out there because we are in your season. Happy birthday, my Sagittarius! Yeah, it is your birthday season. Very happy birthday to you guys. I love you all so, so very much. I hope you have a great, week, uh, a great month and a great birthday season. I also want to extend a very happy birthday to the December Capricorns out there. We're going to be moving into your season next, at least in terms of Vedic or not Vedic, I'm sorry, Western astrology astrology. With that said, my channel here can resonate either way, Western or Vedic astrology. You take that into account. You let that work for you. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about here, don't worry about it, okay? It, just let it go over your head, <laughs> okay? Um, so with that said, we are moving into January, which is going to be the two-year anniversary of Divine Conversations. Divine Conversations was actually the birthday of Divine Conversations is January 8th. That was the first day that I posted readings here on the channel back in 2018. So Divine Conversations is going to be two years old, you guys, in January. I am super, super excited about that. Um, if you would like to get in on some sort of celebration about Divine Conversations or for Divine Conversations, if you want to send a gift, some, some, something to commemorate, blah, blah, blah. If you have you know a special um, deck of cards that you would like to send to donate to the channel to be used on the channel, whether that be Tarot or Oracle cards, I do have a P.O. box. The, P, the, the address for the P.O. box can be found in the description box below. Um, along with a bunch of other information, like information for personal readings, yes? So keep in mind that these readings are general, okay? So please only take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a more specific view into your situation, then please don't hesitate to email me. My email address along with a list of the readings that I offer, their descriptions and their prices can be found in the description box below. Yeah. Um, so you also can find me on social media. I am on Facebook 
at facebook.com slash divine conversations 2711. You can also find me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. The links to those sites can also be found in the description box below. I do invite you to interact with me on social media, Facebook and Instagram. However, if you would like to send me a message, if you would like to contact me, if you have a question, if you want to, if you want to um, order a reading from me, I highly recommend that you do not message me through through Facebook just because I don't always get those messages as quickly as I would like to or as quickly as necessary. Um, I do not want to miss your inquiries, especially if you're looking for a personal reading, okay? So your best bet, if you want to get a personal reading with me, your number one best bet is just to email me directly, divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. That can be found in the description box below. Or to just send me a message on Instagram. Instagram is much easier for me to communicate with you guys uh, direct message-wise. Facebook is just not that reliable, and I don't want to miss your inquiries. Inquiries, okay? So for the cross watchers out there, I do want to explain that these are general readings and mostly I am going to be speaking to the, um, well, not mostly I am. Yeah. Well, actually, yes, mostly I am speaking to the Zodiac sign in question, but because these are general readings, it can be vice versa. It can switch. So if I am explaining a a situation for say Aries and you're a cross watcher for an Aries and I'm speaking directly to the Arian however the story that I'm telling is f is flipped and I'm actually it actually resonates more than I'm speaking to you than the Aries then take it okay take it as it resonates but if it doesn't work that way don't try and make it fit you're only going to at that point end up confusing yourself more or just getting all um, confuzzled and you're just worse off than when you started yeah cool um Finally, what I want to mention is I'm using a brand new Oracle deck this month. And actually, this Oracle deck, it's called the Earth Warriors Oracle by Alana Fairchild. This deck was sent by one of our viewers, Sam. Hi, Sam. Thank you so very much for sending this deck. I used it for the readings this month. And let me tell you guys this deck is awesome it's so interesting how i can you know choose different oracle decks and the messages still resonate very strongly with the rest of the reading you know i was actually and i shouldn't be surprised by that but i was a little I, it was pretty awesome pretty pretty awesome Ooh. okay well with all of that said i think we're ready so let's get into the reading yeah <laughs> Awesome. Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to your reading for December 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, let, so let's jump into this. So it's very interesting, Aquarius, because at first I I was feeling through your energy and it was just feeling very flowy, very airy, which is normal. Um, but I was just getting this sense of happiness and contentment and pride. And I was literally seeing a woman's face just smiling just feeling happy and content and so i was like all right all right aquarius let's see what we've got for you here and immediately immediately these two cards popped out the lovers with the three of swords and i was like well damn that doesn't seem like would be an interest it would be an energy of someone feeling happy or flowy or whatnot um and at this time the wheel of fortune was underneath the deck but i was getting from this I was feeling like someone is finally healing through some sort of heartbreak. You could be dealing with, sorry, there's something on my screen and it's annoying me. Um, you could be dealing with a divine counterpart, a twin flame activation, a twin flame situation. Um, and I, I wanted to keep it there. I wanted to leave it there because I felt like I would, I would understood what was coming through, but spirit kept saying to me, no, Eric, there's one more card that needs to come out. Pull one more card. And I was like, Eventually, I was like, all right, fine, I'll just do it. Because I knew, because the Wheel of Fortune was underneath the deck, and I knew that was part of the situation too. Um, but I figured, whatever, I'll just tell them. <clears throat> because I feel like, you know, with that Wheel of Fortune energy, you're you're literally turning things around. And then, so I followed through, and I was like, okay, what's that one last card that wants to come out? The Queen of Wands. So it's like, this is literally, Aquarius, for you, this is an energy of Stella getting her groove back. 
You know what I mean? And I, I feel like this is definitely for someone that went that recently, I want to say within this last year, although no, it, yeah, this is, I mean, this could, mm, to be quite honest with you, this really feels more like someone that went through a twin flame activation a while ago and has been wallowing in the pain and and the, and the circumstances but that's mainly because you didn't really understand what was going on but now you're breaking free from it now you're breaking the chains now you're breaking away from it now you're clearing out the energy now you're getting your confidence and and, and back oh, striving forward for the first time in a very long time Like I literally, I want to say you're you're finally turning this around for yourself. That's that's beautiful, Aquarius. Holy moly! All right, this is very interesting. And this actually, it could be Aquarius. It could be that there was some sort of massive detail about your your awakening or the experience that you had that you might have been denying for a very very long time and now you're finally you i guess you finally have the strength or the courage to to face it at this point and it does it, it feels like it's like one of the last pieces of the puzzle for you or something like that all right aquarius so let's get into this and see what else we have for you here yeah Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of December 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this five shuffles. One. Now, also, for those of you that could be on more on the masculine side of the spectrum here, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. We're just talking about energy, not gender. But to those of you that might be on the masculine side, might be going through um, a, a feminine activation, a rise of the divine feminine within you, okay? This is three. And this could be a situation in which, um, you know, the masculine side of the equation is now failing what the feminine felt throughout this Twin Flame activation. That's been a common theme in the Twin Flame Collective lately. Four, for my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of December 2019. And five. I, I really do feel like, though, this is the feminine here for the most part. Yes, the masculine is going through a, a feminine activation here. But for the most part, the feminine is the one that's really, like, turning things around for herself or himself. Again, this is, ge this is not gender. This is energy, all right? All right, Aquarius. Overall energy. Ooh, yes! The Six of Swords. Beautiful, Aquarius. Absolutely beautiful. Underneath that, oh, you've got the Two of Cups. I do feel like some of you are walking right into the arms of someone that really could love or appreciate you. But also, this is another, this is a depiction of the balance between masculine and feminine energy, okay? Mm, underneath the two of cups you've got the fool ah, someone is walking right into a relationship period that is really of benefit underneath the fool you've got oh, <laughs> as i say that what do we have the king of cups i mean come on but this is also taking emotional responsibility and the, for those of you that have been um wallowing in this pit of despair for x amount of time you fill in X for your own journey. And I really do feel like now you're really starting to take, it's like enough is enough. You're tired of feeling this despair. You're tired of feeling this pain, this hurt, whatnot, whatever. Um, even I'm hearing wishing things would be different. No, now you're, you're taking responsibility, emotional responsibility. You're like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done being, being sad. I'm done feeling like a martyr. I'm done. I'm taking... I'm, I'm, I'm packing up my shit and I'm moving forward. Now, also, some of you are walking right into the arms of a very caring and considerate masculine energy. Okay. 
That is beautiful, Aquarius. All right, so let's get into the rest of the reading here for you. First half, second half. You could look at this as the first half of your first half, second half of your month, or you could look at it as the first half, second half of your reading. Whatever resonates the best for you, okay? First set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius. You have, there's the Wheel of Fortune. Now, I really do feel like you're taking an active role in this. Like you're literally taking the steps that you needed to take for so long to change your karma, to change your circumstances, to change whatever is coming towards you. I mean, when we're, when we manifest, when we work with the universe, right, there is a, a, a sense of passivity that's necessary. There's a sense of being receptive and just surrendering to the energies of the universe with full faith that they're conspiring with you to bring whatever it is you need or want in your life. But there is also a level of action that needs to be taken, okay? You can't just be 100% completely passive and, and, and expect things to change. You do, there are certain physical things that you're going to need to do to help facilitate that change. This is what I'm feeling is coming through with the Wheel of Fortune, that you're actively taking, you're actively taking a role now in your healing or in this change of circumstance for you, okay? The Wheel of Fortune is coupled with the Nine of Pentacles. Beautiful, beautiful. This is definitely an energy of knowing your worth, gaining your independence, gaining your sovereignty, which is also allowing you to take emotional responsibility here with this King of Cups energy, okay? Now, also, for those of you that have been really working on yourselves, it's because of this work that you've done here that is allowing you to be in this energy of receiving some sort of rewards or change in karma or circumstances, external circumstances for yourself. Also, for others of you, the actions that you are taking to pull yourself out, to heal, to, to move forward, to leave this, these rough waters behind, to leave whatever circumstance or conflict you've been experienced behind, that is now putting you in a place, in an energy to start being independent. Okay, beautiful. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius, in the first half of your reading you have. Oh, okay, well, there's the Nine of Swords. All right, well, don't freak out. Or maybe you should stop freaking out. <laughs> oh, I get it. So many of you at this point ha have really no choice but to heal from this because it's been torturing you. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but it's like, it, it's, <laughs> that's more of like a relieving laugh. It's like, oh God, this has been torturing me. Can we just like, I have to do something about this now. <laughs> okay. All right. Excellent. More power to you. Okay. And this actually could be for others of you, or maybe this this also could be for you in terms of like, this is the very last of it before you reach that 10 of swords where you can finally say that the worst is behind you. All right. Nine of swords is coupled with, yeah, the four of pentacles. Somebody here has been holding on to dear life for something. And now it's finally, I really do feel like the universe has been pushing you and pushing you and pushing you to let something go. And it's gotten to the point where it's just like, oh my God, I can't fucking take it anymore. Fine, I'll do it. And the universe is like, geez, finally, good golly. And it's almost even like the universe is saying to you, um, by the way, we don't have to, it doesn't have to be like this all the time. I mean, if you just listen to us and like follow through with the guidance that we're putting forward towards you or the, the things that we're showing you that need to be healed or dealt with or whatnot, it, does, it wouldn't be so extreme. But Aquarius is a fixed, a fixed, fixed sign. Fixed signs can be pretty stubborn. I mean, I'm a Taurus sun in Western astrology. So yeah, I get that stubbornness, you guys. <laughs> I get it. But the universe has finally pushed you to the point where now you're going to release you. You're taking steps to release it, which is it's good. And, and, and even though sometimes you'll get some sort of hunch or some sort of guidance from the universe to take a certain step. And at that moment, you're like, well, this makes no sense. This isn't going to help me. What are you talking about? I'm not doing that. And it's like the universe is like, no, no, I need you to trust me. Can you just like handle this, please? Because it's blocking your manifestations here. Okay. 
your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Aquarius, you have the eight of wands, communication, but moving quickly. For some of you, because this ace of wands did come out as the over the second half of the the over the um overall energy for the pre-shuffle, things might be moving very, very quickly for you. Okay? And that could be a challenge for you because it's moving too fast for you. Again, Aquarius is a fixed sign, but it's like once you start taking these steps, things are going to just be changing so quickly for you. It's almost an energy of like, oh my God, why didn't I do this before? Like literally, this was all I had to do. It's, like, it's, almost, like, it's almost like there's a flood, like the floodgates have opened and now you're just being bombarded with this rush of energy and, and manifestation and, and, and whatnot, whatever. And, you're just, and it's almost like your head is spinning. That's kind of what I'm feeling here. That can be a challenge. It can be very over overwhelming. Eight of Wands is coupled with whoop, the Knight of Swords. Yeah, yeah, that is some fast-moving energy, Aquarius. But also there could be some sort of communication that's needed. I'm also feeling like this, 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 ooh, some of you have got to cut someone off, period. You have just got to cut this off. And it could just be from an energetic point of view. You know, you could have been energetically feeding into the situation, even though you two, especially if this is a twin flame situation and like you guys have hit the separation phase and there, you're, there's no communication whatsoever between the two of you, you could have been energetically feeding into this situation. And I feel like some of you have got to pull the trigger and cut this off completely. That could be a challenge though. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Aquarius, in the first half of your reading you have. Okay, the Five of Cups. All right. But you knew this was coming. You have to feel it to heal it. And also remember that all is not lost here, Aquarius. You have those two cups behind you. And you have the same two cups in your overall energy. Huh. Five of Cups is coupled with the Ace of Swords, y'all. I love this, Aquarius. Coming to terms with the pain. I really do feel like this, this is representing here, this Five of Cups with the Ace of Swords of you actually looking at the situation now. But looking at it with intentions of healing it, to understand it. To understand why those three cups have spilled. You know what I mean? to understand the toxic elements of that situation so you never have to let it in your life again, learning the lesson from whatever it is you dealt with. Okay, Aquarius, this is a, be this is a beautiful reading so far. I'm excited to look at what the second half is going to look like. Let's dive in, shall we? <laughs> First set of surrounding energies for the second half of your reading here you have. All right, <laughs> eight of cups. Booyah leaving the past behind you, walking away. And I'm hearing walking away with your head held high and feeling confident. That's definitely the energies that came through in the pre-shuffle with that Queen of Wands. Yes? Eight of Cups is coupled with the Ten of Wands. All right, leaving the burdens behind. Wow, Aquarius, you have been carrying this for such a long time, haven't you? And now it's time to let it go. And I'm hearing you're finally letting this go. You're finally releasing yourself of the pain, of the strife, of the burden of carrying all this by yourself. And for those of you that are resonating with this in terms like, of like a twin flame situation, I do feel like some of you were trying to carry the burdens of both of you. And I do feel like this is the feminine here. The fe it's, like, it's like you were trying to heal the masculine while also healing yourself. But that person, what I'm picking up here, that person, that masculine that you were trying to heal was using you. And you were like spinning your, you were just spinning your wheels and spinning your wheels and trying to do everything you could to help this person heal. But they just, it was like they were, they were an energetic vampire. They were just sucking you dry. Leaving the past behind you for sure. Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, Aquarius, you have, oh, yes, the Empress stepping into your divine feminine power. I mean, I know that's right, y'all. 
I know that is right. Congratulations, Aquarius. You are finally now. This really, this really does feel like it's this is this is a message for twin for someone or some people that have been some Aquarians that have been dealing with a twin flame situation. You're finally starting to embody the the energies, the true balanced, healthy energies of the divine feminine. Okay. There is a sense of unconditional love for the counterpart that you've been dealing with. However, what I'm hearing is she's not giving in to him any longer. She may love him very, very much. And again, I'm not talking gender, I'm talking energy. She may love him very, very much, but she's not enabling him anymore. Now, the Empress can be an enabler. Don't get me wrong. The Empress can be an enabler because she's so unconditionally loving and she just wants her children and her subjects to be happy that she'll do anything that she can to make them happy, even if it's enabling some sort of, you know, unfortunate or, or toxic tendencies, but hey, it seems or it feels like you are balancing that out and you're still loving this person or loving whomever from unconditionally from afar, but you're also not allowing your energy to be, to be sapped, your abundance to, to, to just be tossed around willy-nilly, you know, that's, you know what I mean? The Empress is coupled with the Six of Cups. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean... Oh, okay. Well, yes, this is also saying that being in your Divine Feminine Empress energy is going to attract a soulmate towards you. Stay in this energy. Also, keep stay in the energy of knowing your worth, okay? That is going to bring in a soulmate for you, someone that can really resonate, harmonize, match your energies. Your challenge. In the second half of your reading here, Aquarius, you have, ooh, the Ace of Cups. Oh, I'm sorry, the Ace of Pentacles. I was going to say the Ace of Cups, but it's the Ace of Pentacles. I'm feeling like this is receiving some sort of offer. Now, it could be some of you are wanting to receive an offer from your divine masculine or this twin flame that you've been dealing with, but that's the problem. That is a problem because if you are embodying this energy of the Empress just with the express desire or for the, the the reason for the sole reason of having someone make you some sort of offer that's not going to work out in your favor what you need to be doing is embodying this empress energy for the sake of yourself for your well-being and because it's who you are so doing it for no other reason than for yourself that is what's important that is what's going to get you this offer okay ace of pentacles is coupled with <laughs> The three of pentacles, all right? So you have to, your challenge here, <clears throat> your challenge here is to do the self-work, the, the work on the self-mastery. The three of pentacles is a card of entrepreneurship and team work, but it's also a card of self-mastery, at least for me as a reader. And when, so your challenge is to continue doing your work on yourself, and then ultimately someone will come forward to hand, to, to hand you that fourth pentacle to give you a solid foundation, okay? Very different from the four of pentacles you were holding on to here though, right? Yeah, very different. Because it's a substantial offer. It's an honest offer. It's something that it's something of, of real value, but in order to receive that, you have to work on your own sense of value, yes? You've got to work on yourself. Three of Pentacles, okay? Closing message or potential outcome, Aquarius, in the second half of your reading, you have, oof, the Ace of Wands. Three aces on the table here. Inspired, feeling inspired to do this work for yourself is what I'm getting. And I feel like you're already kind of there. And that's why you're turning this around. You're turning your situation around. Ace of Wands is coupled with, oh, yeah. The Ten of Cups, Aquarius. I love that. I love that. Wow, you really, some of you are really uh, are manifesting a serious relationship. Oh, 
my god i'm gonna leave it there because that's, that's that's beautiful let's get your oracle guidance here aquarius I really love this. Congratulations to whomever this is resonating for, because this is this is absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna give this one more shuffle, Aquarius. For all my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of December. Let's see what Oracle guidance we have for you here. Woo. Okay. You have. Oh goodness, I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this correctly. Ikshel. Medicine of the Rainbow Jaguar. And it's also card number 13. 13 is a, no a card of trans or a number of transformation, death and rebirth, even. Ikshel. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Medicine of the Rainbow Jaguar. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ikshel protects you now as you transition from one life phase to the next. With her rainbow light, this guardian goddess instructs you on how to use great power with wisdom to nourish only what is worthy. Using jaguar medicine, with perfect timing, she confronts that which is unworthy of healing. I'm sorry. Uh, using jaguar medicine, with perfect timing, she confronts that which is unworthy of her devotion, eradicating destructive forces and creating space for healing, relief, and rebirth. Her presence in the wild power of the jaguar, the renewal, yes, the renewal promise of the rainbow and divine feminine creativity. Um, let me say that again. Her presence is the wild power of the jaguar, the renewal promise of the rainbow, and divine feminine creativity. All darkness shall be overcome. In a reading, this says, you are going through a transition. Cultivate hope and stay true to your intentions. Let nothing divert you from your true path. If you have a new project, vision, or lifestyle that you are seeking to bring into the world, Ikshel is guiding, you and tr guiding and guarding you for a healthy birth. She also brings a message that there are times when fierceness is necessary. It is important that you cut off negative sources completely at this time and do not allow yourself to be used or exploited. <laughs> Fancy that. <laughs> this is not the time to indulge in someone else's ego or go against your own inner knowing in order to give someone the benefit of the doubt. Trust your instincts and break immediately from what isn't right for you. This will bring you new opportunities and situations that are worthy of your passionate devotion. Yes, Aquarius, there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic December. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading next year. <laughs> yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.